Okay, so remember, we went through the Parsha, and you asked many of your questions. You probably still have more questions, do you? Let's go. Okay, yeah. Um, often the Torah mentions nations like the Amorites and the Hittites, and I'm wondering why a document that's meant to be eternal would mention nations that are long gone. Does that also point to like the eternality of these nations in particular, or do like other nations just take the place of them? Okay. So I'm going to broaden your question. There are many things that the Torah discusses that are relevant for a limited amount of time, such as the sacrificial offerings that could only be done when there's a temple. And God, even in the Torah itself, predicted that there wouldn't be a temple. So it isn't as though it was something that happened. Oh, no, now what? You know, it was completely predicted. Okay, so with that in mind, I want to talk to you about three different things. The first will be a direct answer to your question. Okay. Although th this was actually the names of the nations, that there were nations with these names, the names have meanings. So it isn't like to, if somebody were to ask you, what does Canada mean? Who knows, OK? But if you, somebody would ask you, what does the word United States mean? It means something. It means various groups of people who form a state and then unite. That has, that has a conceptual value. Well, Canada, at least to us, it probably means something in the in Native American language, but to us it means nothing. Okay, so these, these people names meant something. So I'm going to tell you what some of them mean. I'm not going to go through all seven, but I will tell you also that there's a reason why we had to end up in face-to-face -face, face -face encounter with people who named their countries these names. So one of them are the Amorites. The word Amor, some of you have enough Hebrew to recognize this. Amar, what does that mean? To say. to say. Okay, so there are some people who to them, everything is about communication. Truth is irrelevant. Fairness is irrelevant. Communication is relevant. Okay, could you give me an example of what that would look like in the modern world? Magazine. What? Magazine. Okay, magazine articles in which the, you, could, you could be for or against anything as long as it's well put. Certain politicians whose entire charisma is built on their communication rather than what they actually have to say. Okay, clear. But so when you look at Kennedy, who was enormously popular, he really did nothing during his presidency, but he really knew how to speak. Okay, clear? What? Right, which he, d he dealt with it by doing nothing. <laughs> okay, clear. Okay, so like if he wasn't there at all, if he would have had a bad flu for like a while, you know. Yeah, okay, now, um, Moab. What does the word Av mean, Abba? Father. Father. Okay, so the reason why there was a nation called Moab and also Ammon, we're going to hear about them in the same story, is as follows. Okay, Sarah had a brother, okay? Her brother died, and she and Avram adopted their son, Lot, the brother's son, Lot. Okay, ah. Lot became Avram's chief disciple. This discipleship worked until Avram came into really significant money, which he shared with Lot as though Lot was his son, but in fact he owed Lot nothing. So Lot, once there was money in the picture, said to Avram, there's not enough land for us to share. You know, I have my flocks, you have your flocks. So the, the core of the argument was that Avram insisted on the flocks being muzzled when they passed through other people's holdings. And Lot said, no. And he, the, both of these sides were arguing through their shepherds. Okay, Avram wouldn't give in on this. He considered it to be theft. Lot said, God promised you the land. This is your land. How could you even talk about theft? Avram said, he, God didn't give it to me at this point. Okay, so Avram said to Lot, we have to separate because hatred isn't good. Okay, however, if you go to the left, I'll always be on your right. If you go to the right, I'll always be to your left, meaning I will not abandon you, but you can go your own way. What do you think he wanted to hear from Lot? No, uh, yeah. no let's work it out. What he heard was, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Lot said, great, I'm going to go to the Valley of Sodom. Have any of you been to the Dead Sea? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so at that point in time, it didn't look like it does today. It was beautiful and fertile. So that's what he wanted because that's a great place to make money and it's a great place to have a good lifestyle. 
The people who lived there appointed him as their judge. So he became like the stone Rebbe. So his excuse that he used to justify his move to a place like that, which turned out to be completely depraved, was that he'll be their spiritual leader and change everything. Okay, so he moves to Las Vegas, and Avraham is still in Harnof, and like whatever. And, uh, okay, and life continues. The people of Stone, as it turned out, were completely depraved. So the focus of their depraved, this all has something to do with your question. I could see the doubt rising. Okay, this, the, the source of their depravity was this belief. I want you to hear this carefully because it's relevant to your lives. In Pirkei Avot, it says that there are different sorts of people. There's one person who loves to give and have other people also give. There's another kind of person who wants to give, but they don't want anybody else to give. There's another kind of person who says, I don't want to give anything. What's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. I'm not going to steal what's yours, but I don't want to give what's mine. And then there's, of course, the worst kind of person who says, what's yours is mine, and what's mine is also mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so the people of Sodom were not like that. They were like the previous category. I don't want to give anything. I don't want to take anything that's yours, but I don't want to give anything. So... On the surface of things, this seems honest and just. The problem with that is it destroys any godliness and any ability to recognize value in the other person. So they ended up making rather dra draconian laws in stone. For instance, it was forbidden by law to bring in people from outside the city as guests. You could bring them in as workers, but not as guests. Why? Because that implies sharing, that implies changing. It was strictly forbidden. Okay, um, do any of you live in a gated community? Do you know what I'm talking about in America? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so that's basically the rule in gated communities. Do you realize this? Like you could bring in someone who's your personal friend who gives you pleasure so there's something that you're gaining, but just somebody who wants to meet you or like a person who's trying to solicit you for charity, no way you could get through the gate. Okay, clear? Okay, there's some gated communities. I have a friend from Irvine who loves to regale me with stories of her community, okay, where um, there are no sidewalks, and you can't have a garage larger than a certain size. I don't remember how many cars it could hold, maybe six cars. So that efficiently prevents you from what? Having many guests. Having many guests, okay, clear? So people have these large homes with circular driveways, but there's a real limit to how many people they could have unless people come in, in a car that's driven by a higher driver that will drive, drop them off and then come back later, okay, which that, of course, is okay. So if you have a chauffeur, you can go there for a big party, but if you don't, like, we really don't need you here, okay, clear? <laughs> Okay, um, you're also, you have to own a lot of a certain size, a large size, but you can't build more than two flights, which also effectively reduces the possibility of a multi-family structure. <laughs> Welcome to Irvine, okay. So that's how it was at Stone. Now the people who think this way are not necessarily evil. What's the thought process? It's not, I want to get people, I hate them. What's the, what's the thought process? They're not giving us anything. Okay. But they're not I'm number one. What? I'm number one. I want to protect myself. I want to enclose myself in a bubble. That was the mentality of Stone, and they made laws that got progressively more draconian. So it began with no guests. It ended up with no access to the justice system if, you don't li if you're not a Sodom citizen. Okay, which meant that guests could be abused. Okay, clear? So if somebody hosted a guest that was considered to be a terrible crime, if somebody was a, a guest, that would, they could be shot. They could be ended. Okay, clear? So that's where Lot's living. So um, God determined that the next step for Stone is complete destruction. Okay. So he tells Avram about this. Avram prays on behalf of Stone. God's answer to him is no. Okay, Avram accepts this as that he's too small to understand the wisdom behind God's decrees. Okay, but an angel is going to be sent to Sodom to save Lot. Now, the breaking point in terms of Sodom's fate was that some, a young woman had allowed somebody not from Sodom, 
to come in and she was sharing with them in some way, food, whatever. So the punishment that they meted out for her was that they covered her body with honey and put her on a sunroof to be devoured by bees. So from God's perspective, that crossed a line that can't be crossed. It reflected that the people of this city could only dig their hole deeper and deeper, so it's no act of kindness to them to allow their continuance. So an angel comes to Lot. This is, we're going to get to Moab and Amun really yeah, soon. Yeah, okay, yeah. Why yeah. was this the place where homosexuality was mentioned? Like, what so, does that have to do with the nature of homosexuality? Okay, so what it has to do with the nature of homosexuality is that I'm going to give you a concrete example of this. When AIDS became a serious concern, so the center at that point was San Francisco, as you know. So if you were a secretary working in a clinic and um, whoever is running the show tells you that they need a form for clients to fill out in which they write down contact information for people with whom they've recently had sexual encounters so they could be notified. That makes sense? How many lines would you have left? Four. You would have done four. Four? Twenty. You're getting closer. Yeah. <laughs> They started with 20 and they had to add. Okay, and the reason is that the homosexual community, or specifically the male homosexual community, is extremely promiscuous. So the culture of the bar, the gay bar, the culture of the bathhouse, it doesn't lend itself to any kind of spiritual connection, the way of an encounter between people who want an enduring connection to have. Are there exceptions to this? Yes. Is that the rule? Yes. Okay. So it's viewed as exploitive. Okay. So I'm not going into a whole discussion as to whether it's inborn or not inborn. That's not for our class today. Okay. So in any case, the angel comes to rescue Lot, but Lot has to be in a position to be rescued. If he's just like the other people of Stone, he can't be rescued. So the angels are disguised as guests. Lot takes them into his home at the risk of his life which is what made him redeemable. Okay, then the people of Stone hear about this through his wife. His wife complains to me, did you hear what he did? I have to ask you for some salt. He brought some people over. I've never seen them in my life. Okay, got this? Okay, so um, the people of Stone heard about this. They surround his house. They demand that he surrender the guests who are male to be abused. He won't do it. Okay, but now this tells you Lot's headset. He says, don't take them. They're my guests. They took shelter under my roof. I have two daughters. Okay, virgins. Okay, clear? This is a terrible way of thinking. So this tells you that Lot was redeemable and not redeemable. Okay, and Ramban, who talks about this, is, that shows how he related to women in general. A normal man does not say this. So at that point, the angels force Lot back into the house. It be, Stone begins the destruction phrase, phase, you know, hail, limestone, everything. He and his daughters escape to a cave, okay? This is a cave where wine was stored. His daughters are looking at the massive destruction. They think this is the end. The world is ending, okay? He starts drinking of the wine, he gets drunk, and the daughters encouraged him to drink. When he was drunk, when he was really in a drunken stupor, the eldest daughter slept with him because she wanted the world to continue, which shows that she was in a completely different place spiritually than her father. She saw the world continuance as valid. Okay, the second daughter slept with him the next night, and she all, they both became pregnant. The first daughter had a child, who she named Moab, which means from my father. The second daughter, who was more discreet, named her child Amon, which means from my people, which is a much more discreet name. Moab and Amon eventually, in the course of time, became entire nations. Moab became a nation that was, named, was known for two things, promiscuity, not surprisingly, and um, the sort of selfishness that oftentimes goes along with this because promiscuity is by definition exploitive. So when the Jews passed through Moab on their way out, they were cruel to them and then they later tried to seduce the Jewish women with their own daughters. So they stayed in character. 
Could a person choose out of this? Yes. Did they choose out of it? No. Okay. So that's Moab. So Moab may not marry into the Jewish people because the differences are too great. Okay, there are other nations who also, to a lesser degree, are forbidden. Ammon, okay, is also forbidden because of where they're coming from, although they weren't considered as evil as Moab. There were two people who ended up exceptional to this rule, and the women were never for, for, uh, forbidden because everything wrong was done by the men. One is Ruth, and the other is an Ammonite princess, who or one of Shlomo's wives. Okay, so from God's perspective, it was worth for these worthwhile for these nations to continue to exist for the sake of even two people who come from them, were valid and righteous. Okay, so the other nations, the nations who they fought against. Okay, so we have Moab, Ammon, Emor. We have the Chivi. Lechavot means to discuss. Okay, so there are other nations who, similar to the communicators, are the ones who enter discussions, false treaties, things like that. There are their Girgashis, who did live in Israel, but fled. When the Jews offered peace terms, they thought it was better to leave completely, and they did. So we never did battle against them. Okay, and there are more. There are the Prezis, which means the one who spread out. They were the empire builders. Okay, together they were all called the Canaanim. There was a nation called Canaan, but together they formed a confederation called Canaan. Canaan means to submit. Even in modern Hebrew, Canaan means to surrender. And their surrender was to their own sense of empowerment, to their own desires, and if the shoe fits, okay, whatever. <laughs> so those are the nations that the Jews had to oppose in order to define themselves, because people often define themselves through opposition. Mm -hmm.